Welcome back to Good Rig Tutorials. This is part three of aircraft modeling. We'll be looking at how I do the unwrapping of the models and how I do the markings and colors and textures of my aircraft models. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure to like this video and make sure to post any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. For this um, part of the modeling process, uh, I have been using uh, Modo and I've been using Substance Painter. So let's dive into it. With the model pretty much done, it's time to do the unwrapping. And this is what I start off with. I use a Atlas projection and uh, get all the parts laid out in a, uh, in a fashion like this. You may remember from the previous parts that I have assigned different materials to different parts, the intakes, for instance, and the uh, the uh, cockpit, the cockpit interior, and um, so forth. And um, Moto allows me to uh, select uh, the parts of the mesh uh, that have been assigned to a specific material. So. What I do is I, uh, I select the, uh, the materials that uh, I've been assigned to the inside of the intake and the cockpit interior and uh, delete those from the uh, UV map because I'm only interested in having the surface of the uh, uh, aircraft. So I start to uh, lay the uh, uh, different parts of the map out and uh, make sure the, uh, the, the lines um, sort of uh, line up. So that will make my uh, life a whole lot easier when I do the uh, panel lines. So um, that's what I'm doing here. I'm uh, sorting the, uh, the various parts of the, uh, of the surface of the aircraft. Um, so they pretty much line up with each other. This is the top part. This is the top part of the uh, intake, the lower part of the intake. And where I got some texture seams, I try to make them uh, fit as closely as possible because, again, it'll make doing panel lines and riveting uh, far easier. Here is a few small parts that need to be uh, put in place. And here's the splitter plate of the intake. And if, as I do this, I come across some sections of the aircraft which is... Uh, uh, on the inside, which will not be visible to the um, uh, when I do the renders, so I pretty much either delete them or assign a different material to them. Uh, at least I'm not interested in having uh, those on this UV map. <clears throat> you always come up with a few small parts of uh, the fuselage which uh, are of less importance, so uh, I tend to compile compile those and uh, just leave them in some corner or wherever the, uh, they would fit. And um, this pretty much uh, is what I've got on the fuselage. So now it's about time to proceed with um, the rest of the um, the uh, meshes that I want to. Uh, um, have as a part of this uh, UV map. And um, what I'm aiming for here is not as much uh, having a um, having them laid out in a in a in a in a manner that uh, makes it, it easy to 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 find the parts, but more uh, to get the the proportions of each part uh, the same. Uh, so when I do the panel lines, there are, there will not be uh, larger in some places of the uh, some parts of the aircraft uh, compared to others. So that was the wing. It's usually quite easy to get that unwrapped. And here is a few other parts I want to include in the um, in the UV map. It's the uh, part of the sidewinder rail, um, which didn't unwrap too well. But eventually I sort of got to something that I found uh, to be useful and placed it uh, somewhere where the, where we, it would uh, fit on the on the um, on the map. 
Here's a few uh, parts of the uh, exhaust. Here's some out of the control surfaces. And that was, as far as I remember, pretty much it. So there's not much to this. It's just a matter of uh, sorting and it's a matter of of making sure that uh, you get everything in proportion. So with this, I have got everything I want. The last part is that I save all the parts in a different uh, file and save it as a FBX because now we're moving to Substance Painter. And that uh, program only can use certain 3D formats and FBX is one of them. So here we got the Substance Painter, painter and um, I've imported the FBX model. And what you haven't seen this uh, part here is that I have done the uh, bump map. I have described that in a different movie and I will link to it here. Uh, but um, I have imported that into Substance Painter and added it a, an, um, an anchor point to it, which uh, will come in very handy when I start doing the weathering. But what I got here is not the correct colors, but something that pretty much uh, matches with the real thing. And then it's just a matter of start painting in the stripes. The uh, aircraft that will uh, be in the, the foreground of my aviation art piece will be this tiger-striped um, version of the uh, F5N. So, well, here we got the correct colors. Uh, a update to the um, to the uh, to Substance Designer allowed me allowed to um, to get the uh, a, a EX codes uh, in there, so uh, that was pretty uh, handy. And there's not much to this uh, either. I just used a hard brush to uh, draw out the uh, the stripes and used photos as reference. So uh, it was just a matter of getting uh, everything uh, done here. Now this is a pretty long and pretty tedious process. So uh, as you can see, I make a lot of mistakes and delete and redo and whatnot. Um, but eventually I got every stripe made. <clears throat> I'll not show you everything that I did on this one because it's pretty much the same throughout the entire aircraft. So this is just a, uh, a part of the process which uh, takes some time and it's not very hard to do but uh, one little trick here uh, is that the stripes were painted in uh, where you sort of could see this uh, edge that was uh, clearly made by some sort of spray can or uh, so so I added a a, a blur to the uh, to the stripes before I started rendering out the uh, the maps um, and that made the uh, it it gave it it this uh, sort of spray feel, and as you can see, it was pretty difficult to get everything uh, in place and uh, fit it uh, in so it uh, matches uh, the real thing. So um, now we're getting quite close to uh, at least one side. This is the side that'll be uh, visible on the uh, aviation part. A piece that I'm working on um, so it was pretty easy that uh, it was pretty uh, it was pretty uh, uh, important that this one was uh, quite close to the to the real thing now with the colors done uh, we get to the fun part and the fun part is to do the weathering and that's where the um, the anchor points come came in as a uh, very handy tool because what I got here is that I um, uh, added the anchor point as a um, as a micro detail, and that allows uh, the uh, smart masks in uh, Substance Painter to understand what's going on in the bump map and the height maps. So uh, the uh, the the dirt and the and the um, and the bleach and whatever I've decided to add uh, 
reacted to the uh, to the bump map I've added. So this what I'm doing right here. The first pass I I did a, a little bit of uh, of dirt around the uh, the panel lines, and what I'm working on here is to make a sort of bleach effect on the top of the aircraft. So I've uh, added a black masks and uh, I uh, set the uh, the mode to saturation and then turned down the um, the uh, opacity a little bit. So we got a slightly um, slightly bleached upper surface of the aircraft which uh, would fit the um, the conditions in uh, at uh, Fallon quite nicely. So uh, here is a little bit of more dirt added to the uh, panel lines and to the uh, uh, concave areas of the aircraft. So that's it. And we don't want too much here because th these aircrafts were not very uh, dirty. And every time I have added another mask, I go and check the roughness and the metallic uh, section to s make sure that I don't get like these very extreme values. Um, and well, pretty much this is all there is to it. It's just a matter of trial and error and see what you sort of like. And when you get something that you think might work, get it into uh, Moto again and um, test it out to see if it, uh, it works. I have, um, at least when working with Moto, um, what you see in Substance Painter, Painter isn't exactly what you see, what you get in uh, in Moto. Despite I've made a a, a uh, render output that fits Moto, um, so you get a few differences. Um, so you, you need to go back to to make a few tweaks uh, in Substance Painter before you get the result that you're looking for. And uh, this final pass. I didn't use micro details because I just wanted a something to break up the uh, the uh, um, roughness and the uh, and the metallic maps. So I made the uh, uh, the diffuse very very subtle and then tweaked the roughness and the metallic uh, of that layer. Um, so it uh, was just a little above or a little below the uh, average value of the rest of the aircraft. And this was pretty much what I decided to go with in the first round, at least. Um, so that's it. And uh, the result um, of this was good enough to import into Moto. And with that, I started working on the markings. So with the textures done, it's uh, time to add some markings. And as you can see, here I am in Illustrator. Any uh, vector app would do the exact same trick. Uh, and I've imported the um, UV map as a backdrop and I have added markings to it. And most of this is pretty much just regular text which I've uh, added to the uh, surface of the aircraft moved it around a bit until I was happy with it when I did this I saved it as a SVG file which uh, Moto is able to read so I could pretty much uh, alter the placement of the markings here and uh, the um, markings in Moto would uh, change accordingly to what I've done here so it usually takes a little bit of moving around to get the uh, to get the um, markings placed in the correct position. So back here in Moto, the um, the markings we've done in Illustrator have been uh, updated and uh, placed on the uh, uh, aircraft as uh, any other uh, image map would uh, would do. So. What's uh, clever about this is that the uh, Moto can read the SVG vector files. So um, if I save an SVG file from Illustrator, it will uh, uh, automatically update here in Moto. So uh, when I have to move the textures around a little bit to get them in the right position, uh, that's a very easy job to do. So that's pretty much what there is to it. Um, I would like though to add one last thing and that's the exhaust area here as you can see that's been uh, uh, tempered with us with it as well and if we look over here in the uh, shader tree 
we get a group here with an entirely new texture. The metal texture is in fact a texture that covers the entire aircraft here. But with the group mask, I can make a, uh, an additional image map, which is uh, white in this area and black in the rest, and motor will recognize it as uh, something that you, uh, it'll only read the places where it's white. So that's right here. So uh, with the uh, exhaust mask, I can decide where I want the, uh, the uh, uh, neutral metal finished surface to be. And as you can see right above here, I got my bump maps up here, which um, allows me to retain the bump map in the neutral metal area. And that's pretty clever. With this, I'll uh, stop uh, this video for now with the, the textures almost done. As you can see, there are still areas that needs some uh, attention, but that's pretty much it. And once that is done, there's a few de details to add, and then this uh, aircraft is actually completed, and we'll continue to work on the environment where the aircraft are going to be placed. But that's up for another video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.